Oh, it's all about me? Oh my god. Yay! and welcome to Steffi's Wine Club. Today we're going to talk about wine labels and why they're so confusing. Why should you care about wine labels? Well, when you're in the store looking for a wine that you think you might like or looking for a wine that maybe would make a good gift, you want to be able to look at the information on the wine label and first decipher what information is actually important and what information is just for marketing and also then use that information to sort of be able to make assumptions about the flavors or the quality or the type of wine that's going to be in the bottle. So the first thing that's going to jump out at you when you see a wine label is probably going to be the producer's name and this is important for a few reasons. Um, for the company it's really important for branding. Uh, you want to be able to put your brand name on the wine that you're producing but it's also important for the consumer because if you know a winemaker or a brand makes a style of wine you really like a lot of the time that style of production is carried out throughout their various wines so if you like Cabernet Sauvignon and you like Pinot Grigio and a producer is making both of those wines you might very well like both of those wines if you like both of them made in a similar style. Alright so the next thing that's probably gonna jump out at you is the region and Usually the region's going to be listed fairly big, definitely not as big as the brand name, but sometimes you're going to have to look at the back and see if it says Vin de France or it's Italy, Italia, maybe Spain. Some of the uh, older European styles that list an appellation or a more specific region on the front of the bottle aren't going to have the country unless you look on the back. And if you're new to wine, um, that can be a really good little pointer. If you're confused about where a region is, you can always look at the back of the wine and it's going to tell you where it was imported from. Another thing that's going to be really important is to pay attention if it lists any varietals. And varietals, as we've discussed, are the types of grapes used to make the wine. If it's something like a single varietal wine that just says Chardonnay or just says Pinot Noir, it's going to be fairly easy to use this as a metric for deciding what wine you would like. Um, just based on how much you've liked those grapes in the past or what styles you really like, it gets a little more confusing when we're talking appellations or very specific regions. And these are regions where um, laws and tradition play a really important role in what grapes go into the wine and they're not always listed on the bottle. So that is where I'm going to be when Google slash memorization is your best friend. You're going to make that association once you get to know regions and varieties a little better. Now, we just looked at region and we looked at varietal and those two on their own are very important but when you put them together they become even more important. For example, we just talked about Chardonnay last week and though when you talk about Chardonnay, an American Chardonnay is going to be very very different from a French Chardonnay. So even though you might like American Chardonnay, you might not be as big a fan as French Chardonnay or vice versa. So it's also important to take the region and the variety into consideration and how those are going to interact together instead of just on their own. Last thing you're going to find on absolutely every bottle is either vintage or non-vintage. A little bit confusing because in wine world it means something completely different than in general English world. So in wine world it does not mean retro, it does not mean of a certain age. Vintage just means the year on the bottle is going to be the year that the grapes were harvested. So on a vintage bottle of wine there's going to be a year listed and you're going to know that the grapes used in that wine were grown and harvested on that year. On non-vintage bottles you're just not going to see a year and you know that means that there's going to be wines that had grapes grown from various years. And this sometimes is a quality of lower quality wines but sometimes it just means that two vintages lined up really nicely in a balance that work really well together. Most very high quality wines are going to be vintage wines because certain vintages have more cachet to them. Certain years are just better growing conditions for grapes and therefore make better wines and as you get more advanced in your wine tasting that's going to be something you want to pay attention to but the most important thing is to know whether or not the wine you're drinking is in its prime for drinking or out of its prime for drinking. And for white wines we're looking for a maximum of three to five years since the vintage date and for reds for really high quality it can be anywhere from 20 years or for wines that are meant to be drank a little younger, a little bolder, that can be anything from two to five years. So it's just important to know the general time and age of wine that you want to be drinking uh, for the style that you're looking for. Now that we're past the, uh, the main components you're going to find on every wine label, I'm just going to talk quickly about a few things you might see 
um, and what they mean and if they really mean anything. Because some things are just thrown on wine labels as a marketing technique and they don't actually have any basis or any set rules that allow vineyards or wineries or producers to put that on the label. So another thing we might look see is estate bottled. And estate bottled actually does have some rules and regulations to it. It means that the grapes were grown, the wine was produced and bottled on the same estate. So the same group of people saw it from vine until bottle. And that's usually a great indicator that the people who are making this wine really cared about the final project and putting, you know, all the steps necessary from the grapes growing all the way to the bottling process. Um, but sometimes it is thrown on bottles that are just sort of like family owned or run. It doesn't necessarily mean quality, but it is a good indicator that someone really cared about the product. The thing you might see on a bottle from time to time is the word reserve or reserva, depending on what language the label is in. And this doesn't actually have any set rules. It can you be used to signify the top wine in a line put out by a producer. Uh, so often it does sort of hint at some level of quality, but there's no set rule for how long it has to be aged or any production processes that need to go into it. So when you see reserve, take it with a grain of salt because it could just be a marketing ploy. Uh, speaking of marketing ploys, we have Old Vine. Again, not something that actually takes into consideration any rules or regulations and it's definitely not enforced by any laws. Usually it means uh, it refers to a style of wine taken from grape vines that are older and often grape vines that are older have been pruned to have lower yields and more concentrated grapes but that's not always the case and when people say old vine they could mean anything from a 15 year old vine to an 150 year old vine and obviously there's a huge difference a hundred odd some years of difference between those two. So again, something that can be an indicator of quality but should also be taken with a grain of salt. Another thing you might see is contained sulfites. And this is a big, scary, scientific sounding word, but sulfites are actually really common in a lot of grapes used to make wine. It's a naturally occurring substance, but some countries and some areas have decided that sulfites are bad or that sulfites might contribute to headaches that some people associate with wine or bad hangovers. Again, there's no overwhelming scientific evidence that this is the case, but you're going to see it on a lot of bottles, especially if they were originally imported through the US because the US has a law that contains sulfites must be on all wines that contain any sulfites. The last thing you should be aware of is fancy looking labels. We all love a fun label, we all love a cat shaped bottle of wine. Trust me, I've bought into all those marketing ploys and if you're looking for a really fun wine that's festive and cute that you're going to bring to a party, that can be perfect. But you should know that you can't judge a wine by its label much like you can't judge a book by its cover. When you see a really fun fancy label or you see a really classic chic looking label, those are all just marketing ploys and you never know what wine truly lies underneath unless you pay attention to the other things on the label that we've discussed. So when in doubt, I always look at who's making the wine, when they're making it, and what they're using to make it. Um, that's kind of the rule of thumb I follow. It's always important to take into consideration the vintage, the region, the country, any appellation, any producers. But after that, it's all about personal taste. And if you love a chic looking bottle of wine, then you go girl. But if you're looking for a truly quality bottle of wine, you can't just go by how the label looks. All right, guys, thank you so much again for listening to Steffi's Wine Club. You know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you want to check out my Wine of the Week or any more information, check out my Instagram, at Steffi's Wine Club. And if you have any questions, concerns, or queries, you can always email me at Club at gmail.com. Until next time, keep it.